Hello everyone, now let us discuss about the anatomy of ear. Coming to the major function of the ear, it mainly aids in hearing. Hearing is the ability to perceive sounds. And the sensory receptors of the ear can transduce sound vibrations with amplitudes as small as the diameter of an atom of wood, that is 0.3 nanometers into electrical signals. Thousand times faster than photoreceptors can respond to light. And the ear also contains receptors for equilibrium that helps you to maintain your balance and be aware of the orientation in the space. Coming to the major regions, ear is divided into external ear, middle ear and inner ear. The external ear, it collects the sound waves and channels them inwards. And the middle ear conveys sound vibrations to the oval window. And internal ear, it houses the receptors for hearing and equilibrium. Here you can see the overall representation of entire ear, outer ear, middle ear and inner ear. In the current session, we will be discussing about each part of each region of the ear. First of all, we will discuss about outer ear or external ear. The external ear consists of auricle, external auditory canal and eardrum. External ear consists of auricle, external auditory canal and eardrum. Auricle or pinna is a flap of elastic cartilage shaped like the flayed end of a trumpet and covered by skin. And the rim of the auricle is the helix and the inferior portion is the lobule. And usually ligaments and muscles that attach the auricle to the head. The next part is external auditory canal is a curved tube about 2.5 centimeters long that lies in the temporal bone and leads to the eardrum. Finally, the tympanic membrane. Tympan means a drum. The tympanic membrane or eardrum. Eardrum is also called as tympanic membrane. Auricle is also called as pinna. You must be familiar with the terms. Tympanic membrane or eardrum is a thin semi-transparent partition between the external auditory canal and the middle ear. And the tympanic membrane or the eardrum is covered by epidermis and lined by simple cuboidal epithelium. Between the epithelial layers is the connective tissue composed of collagen, elastic fibers and fibroblasts. The tearing of the tympanic membrane is called as perforated eardrum. Tearing of the tympanic membrane is called as perforated eardrum. And it may be due to the pressure from the cotton swab, trauma or a middle ear infection and usually heals within a month. And the tympanic membrane may be examined directly by an otoscope. Auto means ear, scope means to view. A viewing instrument that illuminates and magnifies the external auditory canal and tympanic membrane. Near the external opening, the external auditory con canal contains a few hairs and specialized sweat glands. Few hairs and specialized sweat glands called as ceruminous glands that secrete the ear wax or cerumen. And the combination of hair and cerumen helps prevent the dust and foreign objects from entering the ear. Cerumen also prevents damage to the delicate skin in the external ear canal by water and insects. It usually dries up and falls out of the ear canal. However, some people may produce large amounts of cerumen which can become impacted that is nothing but impacted cerumen condition and can muffle the incoming sounds. And the treatment for impacted cerumen is usually a periodic ear irrigation or removal of wax with a blunt instrument by a trained medical professional. This is nothing but cerumen impaction removal. Next coming to middle ear. The middle ear is a small air filled cavity. Middle ear is a small air filled cavity in the petraeus portion of the temporal bone that is lined by epithelium. And it is separated from the external ear by the tympanic membrane and from the internal ear by a 
thin bony partition that contains small membrane covered openings they are the oval window and the round window the middle ear is separated from the external ear by tympanic membrane and it is separated from the internal ear by oval window and round window extending across the middle ear and attached to it by ligaments are the three smallest bones of the body they are the auditory ossicles which are connected by synovial joints so the joint type of ear is synovial joints the auditory ossicles are connected by synovial joints they are three smallest bones of the body and the bones are named from their shapes they are malleus incus and stapes commonly called hammer anvil and stirrup respectively hammer anvil and stirrup malleus incus stapes the handle of the malleus attaches to the internal surface of the tympanic membrane and the head of the malleus articulates with the bone of the incus and the incus the middle bone in the series articulates with the head of the stapes and the base or foot plate the base or foot plate of the stapes fits into the oval window directly below the oval window is another opening the round window which is enclosed by a membrane called as secondary tympanic membrane round window is enclosed by secondary tympanic membrane besides the ligaments two tiny skeletal muscles also attach to the ossicles the two skeletal muscles which attach to the ossicles are tensor tympani muscle and stapedius muscle the tensor tympani muscle which is supplied by the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve that is fifth nerve it limits the movement and increases the tension of the eardrum to prevent damage from damage to the inner ear from loud noises tensor tympani muscle it protects the inner ear from the damage of the loud noises the next muscle is tapedius muscle which is supplied by facial nerve previously the tensor tympani muscle is supplied by trigeminal nerve whereas the stapedius muscle is supplied by facial nerve it is the smallest skeletal muscle in the human body this is an important point what is the smallest skeletal muscle in the human body it is stapedius muscle in the middle ear by dampening the large vibrations of the stapes due to loud noises it protects the oval window which also decreases the sensitivity of hearing and for this reason paralysis of the stapedius muscle is also associated with hyperacusia which is abnormally sensitive hearing because it takes a fraction of second from the tensor tympani and stapedius muscles to contract and then protect the inner ear from prolonged loud noises because it takes a fraction of second to it takes a fraction of second for these two muscles to contract they can protect the inner ear from prolonged loud noises they can protect the inner ear from prolonged loud noises but not from brief ones such as a gunshot and the anterior wall of the middle ear the anterior wall of the middle ear contains an opening which leads directly into auditory tube auditory tube which is commonly called as eustachian tube or pharyngotympanic tube auditory tube or pharyngotympanic tube or eustachian tube anterior wall of the middle ear contains an opening that is eustachian tube and the eustachian tube or auditory tube which consists of both bone and elastic cartilage it connects the middle ear with the nasopharynx that is the superior portion of the throat eustachian tube connects the middle ear with the nasopharynx it is normally closed at its medial end 
and during the swallowing and yawning it opens allowing air to enter or leave the middle ear during swallowing and yawning it opens the it opens and allowing the air to enter or leave the middle ear until the pressure in the middle ear equals the atmospheric pressure and most of us have experienced our ears popping as the pressures equalize whenever you yawn or swallow and when the pressures are balanced the tympanic membrane vibrates freely as sound waves strike if the pressure is not equalized intense pain hearing impairment ringing in the ear and vertigo would develop and the auditory tube also is a route for pathogens the auditory tube or eustachian tube is a route for pathogens to travel from the nose and throat to the middle ear causing the most common type of ear infection that is otitis media or homeostatic imbalance etc here you can see the middle ear portion the external ear is separated from the middle ear by tympanic membrane or eardrum and the red one is the stapedius muscle which is the smallest skeletal muscle and these three are the auditory ossicles malleus incus and stapes stapes the foot plate of the stape attaches to the oval window and the middle ear is separated from the internal ear this part is the internal ear that we'll discuss in the next diagram the middle ear separates from the internal ear by oval window and round window it also contains an opening that is the eustachian tube or auditory tube now finally coming to inner ear the inner or internal ear is also called as labyrinth the inner ear or internal ear is called as labyrinth because of its complicated series of canals structurally it consists of two main divisions an outer bony labyrinth that encloses an inner membranous labyrinth it is like a long balloons put inside a rigid tube the bony labyrinth is a series of cavities in the petrous portion of the temporal bone divided into three areas the bony labyrinth is divided into semicircular canals the vestibule and cochlea and the bony labyrinth is lined by periosteum and contains perilymph bony labyrinth contains perilymph and this fluid is a chemically is similar to cerebrospinal fluid it surrounds the membranous labyrinth a series of epithelial sacs and tubes inside the bony labyrinth that have same general form as the bony labyrinth and houses the receptors for hearing and equilibrium this is an important point membranous labyrinth houses the receptors for hearing and equilibrium the epithelial membranous labyrinth contains endolymph whereas bony labyrinth contains perilymph and the level of potassium ions in the endolymph is usually high for an extracellular fluid and the potassium ions play a role in the generation of auditory signals next is the vestibule is the oval central portion of the bony labyrinth what is a vestibule vestibule is the oval central portion of the bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth in the vestibule contains two sacs they are called as utricle which is little bag and saccule which are connected by a small duct the membranous labyrinth consists of two sacs utricle and saccule projecting superiorly and posteriorly from the vestibule are the three bony semicircular canals each of which lie at the at proximally right angles to two other based upon their position they are termed as anterior posterior and lateral semicircular canals the anterior and posterior semicircular canals are vertically oriented whereas the lateral one is horizontally oriented and at the end of each semicircular canal is a swollen enlargement called as ampulla ampulla at the 
end of each canal is a swollen enlargement called as ampulla and the portions of the membranous labyrinth that lie inside the bony circular canals are called as semicircular ducts and these structures they connect the utricle of the vestibule and the vestibular branch of the vestibulocochlear nerve consists of ampullary utricular and saccular nerves the vestibular branch of the eighth nerve which is nothing but vestibulocochlear nerve consists of ampullary utricular and saccular nerves and these nerves they contain both first order sensory neurons and motor neurons that synapse with receptors for equilibrium the first order sensory neurons they carry sensory information from the receptors and the motor neurons they carry feedback sensory neurons they carry sensory information whereas motor neurons they carry feedback signal to the receptors apparently to modify their sensitivity and the cell bodies of the sensory neurons are located in the vestibular ganglia anterior to the vestibule is the cochlea that is snail shaped it is a bony spiral canal cochlea cochlea is a bony spiral canal that and resembles a snail shell and makes almost three turns around the central bony core called the modiolus the sections through cochlea reveal that it is divided into three channels cochlear duct scala uh, scala vestibule and scala tympani the cochlear duct is nothing but scala media is a continuation of membranous labyrinth into the cochlea cochlea duct is the continuation of membranous labyrinth into the cochlea it is filled with endolymph the channel above the cochlear duct is the scala vestibule which ends at the oval window and the channel below this is scala tympani which ends at the round window scala vestibuli ends at oval window and scala tympani ends at round window both the scala vestibuli and scala tympani are a part of bony labyrinth of the cochlea therefore these chambers are filled with uh, perilymph the scala vestibule and scala tympani are completely separated by the cochlea duct except for an opening at the apex of the cochlea that is helicotrema an opening at the apex of the cochlea is called helicotrema the cochlea adjoins the walls of the vestibule into which the scala vestibuli opens and the perilymph in the vestibule is continuous with that of the scala vestibule the next is vestibular membrane it separates the cochlear duct the vestibular membrane separates the cochlea duct from the scala vestibuli and basilar basilar membrane separates cochlea duct from scala tympani resting on the basilar membrane is a spiral organ or organ of corti resting on the basilar membrane is a spiral organ or organ of corti the spiral organ is a coiled sheet of epithelial cells including supporting cells and about 16000 hair cells which are the receptors for hearing organ of corti is also called as organ of hearing and there are two groups of hair cells the inner hair cells and outer hair cells the inner hair cells are arranged in single row whereas the outer hair cells are arranged in three rows at the apical tip of each hair cell are 40 to 80 stereo cilia that extend into endolymph of the cochlea duct despite their name stereo cilia are actually long hair like microvilli arranged in several rows of graded height at their basal ends inner and outer hair cell synapse both with first order sensory neurons and with motor neurons from the cochlear branch of the vestibulocochlear nerve cell bodies in the sensory neurons are located in the spiral ganglia cell bodies of the sensory neurons are located in the spiral ganglia although outer hair cells 
outnumber them by 3 is to 1. The inner hair cells synapse with 90 to 95 percent of the first order sensory neurons in the cochlear nerve that relay auditory information to the brain. You will understand these things better when we discuss about the physiology of hearing. As of now, just focus on the anatomy. By contrast, 90% of motor neurons in the cochlear nerve synapse with outer hair cells. The next point is the tectorial membrane, a flexible gelatinous membrane covers the hair cells of the spiral organ. In fact, the ends of the stereocilia of the hair cells are embedded in the tectorial membrane while the bodies of the hair cells rest on the basilar membrane. Here you can see the entire uh, pictorial representation of inner ear. Here, this is the stapes in oval window. And as we have discussed earlier, the inner ear is called as labyrinth because it is complicated by series of canals. The outer bony labyrinth. This is the outer bony labyrinth. And it encloses an inner membranous labyrinth. This is the membranous labyrinth. This is the outer bony labyrinth. And this inside this is the membranous labyrinth. Next is the vestibule. Here you can see this is the vestibule. Sorry, this one. This is the vestibule. Vestibule is the oval central portion. Here you can see the shape is oval. This is the oval central portion of the bony labyrinth. Vestibule is the oval central portion of the bony labyrinth. And membranous labyrinth in the vestibule consists of two sacs. They are uterusal and sacculi. Uterusal and sacculi. Next, projecting superior and posteriorly from the vestibule are three bony semicircular canals. These you can see, these are the semicircular canals that contain the semicircular ducts. Three. Lateral, posterior and anterior. Three semicircular canals. This is the anterior semicircular canal. This is the posterior semicircular canal. And this is the lateral semicircular canal. These semicircular canals, they lie pro approximately at right angles to two other. And as we have discussed earlier, based upon the position, they are divided as anterior, posterior and lateral. The anterior and posterior. If you can see here, this is the anterior and this is the posterior. The anterior and the posterior semicircular canals are vertically oriented. Whereas the lateral semicircular canal, it is horizontally oriented. These two are vertically oriented. This is horizontally oriented. The next is, these structures, they connect the uterusal of the, they connect the uterusal of the vestibule. Anterior to the vestibule is cochlea. Anterior this is the vestibule. Anterior to the vestibule is cochlea. The yellow color portion is the cochlea. It is a snail shaped bony spiral canal. And inside it, the sections through the cochlea reveal that it is divided into three channels. The cochlea duct. Scala vestibuli and scala tympani. Cochlea duct, scala vestibuli and scala tympani. Here you cannot see the scala vestibuli and scala tympani. If possible, when we are discussing about the physiology of hearing, we will discuss the pictorial representation of scala vestibuli and scala tympani. As of now, this is the cochlea, cochlea duct and this is the round window and this is the ampullae. Ampullae of the semi-circular duct. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for further videos on medical coding and 
सी पी सी ट्वेंटी 